Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 with some exciting news that the tablet or the electronic flight pack, Flypad as the Fly-by-Wire team call it, version 2 is now available for use in the developer build. You can go ahead and you can download this right now. Version 2 of the tablet you may have seen me use in my recent live streams over the last few weeks where it is still built, currently being in a test phase. Well now it has been released and we're going to go in and have a look at all the new features and the different layout of version 2 of the Flypad. So let's go and have a look. So here we are sat inside the dev build of the latest Airbus 32NX from Fly-by-Wire released on the 13th of June. As you can see it was sat at uh, Barcelona and we're all cold and dark. So let's go ahead and have a look at the new fly pad. Just give this a second to load in. Here we go. So as you can see, straight away, you've now got all your options available on the left-hand side as opposed to where they were previously. Now, let's zoom in a little bit closer and just check how all this works. Your settings tab works exactly the same as before, but you'll see that not all the things that were grayed out previously are grayed out now. They're actually available to use. So instead of setting things through the McDo options, you can now set things on here as well. All are pretty much self-explanatory. And of course, you can calculate your detents and your thrust lever settings by going to the detents page down here clicking on calibrate and then going through the setup which most of you will be familiar with now already. So let's go back to the home screen and if we go back to the home screen we select from Simbrief, make sure your Simbrief username is already set up in the Flypad or on the McDo. Go to uh, click on that and you'll see it brings in all the information just as we would like to see in a very easy to read format. From here then, aside from the information we have, we can then move down to the next tab, and on this tab is the Dispatch tab. There's an overview of the aircraft itself, but the operational flight plan is now available to view, and available to view in almost an exact same format, maybe a sort of like a PDF format, that uh, you would be used to seeing on Simbrief. All of this is now very easy, very clear to read, and you can uh, scroll up and down with the mouse, or of course use the uh, scroll wheel to get right to the end quicker, uh, which I like to quite and do. Uh, for some reason it says the image is not available, probably because uh, this flight plan that I'm using now is uh, out of date, so uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's not been updated, but I guarantee those images with uh, flight plans that you have just created will be, uh, will be available. But as you can see, everything else shows quite nicely. The refueling page works exactly the same as before, so defuel, uh, refuel, set the time to instant fast or real, and then you can uh, set that going. Moving down to the next tab then, we have the ground tab. This works still exactly the same and very self-explanatory. You can call all your vehicles over and get them starting to work. Um, so if I have a quick look out the window, here they come, starting to load things onto, uh, onto the aircraft and the GPU as, uh, as well. On to the next page then, and we've got the performance page. Now the top of descent performance page is probably not something you've seen me use in the live streams, but it is there, again, quite self-explanatory. But the new item that is available is the landing page. And I'm gonna do a full tutorial on this at some point, but basically you can do your landing calculation, which works out your stopping distance. This is very important, of course, if uh, you're running, you, when running the weights of the aircraft, the runway length, the weather at your destination airport, and you just need to make sure that actually you will be able to stop there. It becomes also very important when, for example, you may decide you need to divert to another airport uh, for whatever reason. Uh, may, may be that uh, weather at your destination is not quite as good. You need to divert. You need to check that you can actually get in and stop safely at your uh, at your alternate airport as well. But as I say, a full tutorial on this will now be, uh, now be upcoming. On the next page, we have the Navigraph charts. Now, at the moment, this only supports Navigraph, which of course is a paid for service. Um, there is talk of implementing other charts which are freeware in the future, uh, but we'll have to wait and see for that. 
For the moment then, if you do have a Navigraph chart subscription, the first time you fire this up, this uh, display will have a little code that you can either scan on your smartphone or you can go to the Navigraph website and, uh, and enter, uh, enter a numeric code in and you'll be able to then get it displayed as you see here. Now of course you type in the ICAO field the problem that you might have is that your key bindings mean that uh, you're going to do all sorts of daft things with the aircraft so what I would always recommend it doing is uh, pressing the right alt key um, and bringing out the hang on a minute let me just try again bringing out the uh, the the tablet the fly pad screen so as you can see I'm holding down the right alt key now I've got a little magnifying glass and if I click that I don't think you can actually see the window uh, because of the way I've got my simulator set up but this now pops out into a separate window on my second screen it means that I can now type into there without any issues um, my airport code and then I've now got all the charts available for Barcelona if you go through and select one, of course, you can uh, read it all, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, and that's quite nice. One of the problems which the team are still working on is now I've set this up, if I now come away and then I go back, I've lost that information, which is a bit of a deal breaker for me personally at the moment because I need to be able to refer to stuff very quickly. It's nice to have, if you're going to leave it just on your arrival chart, for example, then it works really nice. But um, yeah, a little bit frustrating that it doesn't hold the chart information there at the moment. Finally, this tab, again, a great uh, new addition to the flypad and that is a VATSIM controllers in range. Now first thing on uh, on a morning I'm sat here in Barcelona uh, only Unicom is available uh, but were we at an airport with some uh, ATC coverage then we'd have all of these plus ATIS information available as well so uh, you don't have to be logged into VATSIM either to uh, to check that out so that's really neat if you're not currently happy with uh, going on to VATSIM uh, you can still use this page and get ATIS information if it is available uh, and there are controllers there. When you do click on these as well it does update which frequency your COM1 is tuned to so that's quite a handy way particularly as a single pilot uh, without having to look down and faff with the radios over on the pedestal just to be able to zip over here and click onto the frequency changes that controllers may have given you. So all in all, I know this is a feature that so many of you have been looking forward to and it's great that the Fly-by-Wire team have now made it available in the developer version. It'll be a while, I presume, until it's available in the stable build, but for now, the dev build is very, very neat to fly and it now comes with this brand new tablet. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you found that useful, please do hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next video. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye for now.